What's the most interesting story a stranger has told you? A homeless man told me why he was homeless. Mind you this messed with his head. He was in Iraq. And Sodders would come in the hospital unit. He was a nurse. They would ask him as they were dying to send their loved ones special messages. He said it affected him because he didn't know how to contact someone from a first name. X, Mom, Sarah, Liz. But he promised them in their last moments before passing. He said he felt guilty he lied to them. I told him you brought them comfort in their last moments. It broke my heart to hear those stories. 32. This actually happened to me today. I took my two young daughters to the park. When I pulled into a parking spot, there was a man who looked to be in his 60s filling his water bottle next to the playground. We went down to the playground, and I noticed him walking awkwardly from a distance. At first, I thought he was drunk, but as he came closer it appeared he was intellectually disabled. He stood at the upper level of the playground staring at us as my kids played with the musical equipment. We were the only ones at the park. It made me a bit uncomfortable at first, but he eventually walked away and began picking up trash and putting it in the bin by us. He made a comment about making the park look nice and walked over to me. He started talking to me about Star Trek and how he is re-watching the original series. At this point I was just being friendly and just listened. He then told me about how he used to work as a police officer. Me being an asshole just assumed that this meant he worked at a Walmart or Target as a greeter or something. He said he had to retire after his accident. So I asked what happened and that's when he turned around to show me the scar about 6 inches from his neck down his spine. He said he was responding to a call in a snowstorm and rolled his car multiple times, breaking his neck. Another officer passed the scene and saw his lights in the ditch with the car upside down and impinned inside. He said they had to bring him back multiple times and he spent about 4 months in the hospital and another year in rehabilitation. He was paralyzed in part of his body, had to learn how to walk again, regain motor function, speech, etc. I sat on a bench with him for about 45 minutes talking with him about his career, past relationships, current issues, etc. Eventually another woman showed up with what looked to be her grandson. She kept shooting looks our way as he was a very loud talker. She eventually walked up to my girls, who were sitting under the playground, and asked if I was their dad. I could tell they were ready to go, so me and the gentleman shook hands and parted ways. I then walked to my girls and the woman said, Geez, I didn't think you were ever getting out of there. I said, No, I enjoyed talking to him. He had an amazing story and gave her a brief rundown of his situation. She then responds, Yeah, but he has to realize that coming to a park where there are moms and kids makes us very uncomfortable. In my head I was like, Is this bitch serious? After just telling his story, but realized I had the same thoughts when he was just looking at us when we got there. On the ride home my daughter, 9, was asking me questions. She said that she heard a lot of his story, and he seemed super nice, but that lady was just plain mean. It became a good teachable moment on why we shouldn't judge people just on their appearance or differences, but don't go talking to strangers, winky face. I once went to New Zealand for business and at the airport jumped in a taxi driven by a distinguished looking older man. We talked about all sorts of things. He was clearly a very classy educated person. Not the type you would expect to be driving a cab. So I asked him, don't take this the wrong way but you don't seem like your typical taxi driver. How did you get started doing this? He pauses for a long time like a really long time then says, I used to be a farmer in Zimbabwe, I had 150 people working for me, was very well off. One day Robert Mugabe's soldiers came to my farm and said we are coming back here tomorrow at the same time. If you are still here we are going to kill you. Luckily I have a daughter that lives in New Zealand so here I am driving a taxi. Conversation kind of dried up after that. During my misspent youth I entered into a quasi-sugar daddy type relationship with a much much older southern man. The type of dude who is just wealthy so far back that he has never had a job, just pet projects. He had an antique store which maybe made money, maybe didn't, it was impossible to say, and I doubt he cared. He had a lot of the flaws of being that kind of person and the sex was pretty much as bad as one might expect, but his stories were great. In addition to having known Tennessee Williams he had this one story about a famous artist in New Orleans. I can't remember his name, but he's known for having had a door in his estate that was signed by various famous people. I remember seeing Walt Disney's signature in particular when I was at the house that is now a museum of sorts about the history of the estate and the artist. To make that long and well-told story short, that artist was a friend of the old man's family and when he went there as a child in addition to the artist being creepy as fuck and having a withered arm and an African-American manservant that he appeared to be in a sexual relationship with. There was also a dead body in a trunk in his attic, and when the old man, then a child, told his parents that he had found it, absolutely nothing came of it. I was in sixth grade, at the airport in Maui getting ready to leave. It was late at night, probably around 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, and we were sitting in a quiet cafe waiting for time to pass. My family wasn't very stoked to leave Hawaii, considering we live in cold Alaska, 
and it was right during winter. After about 15 minutes of sitting in this airport cafe, an older woman walks up and asks if she could sit with us, seeing as all the other tables had people. We said yes, and had some polite greetings with her. After the usual, how are you, where are you heading spiel, she launched into a story about the Pearl Harbor attack, and how she had been there. She was going to college at the time, and noticed planes in the air. She had assumed that they were training, until she received a call from her brother, telling her to get inside, and that it wasn't a drill. She ignored her brother, and stayed outside with her friends to watch it all go down. She explained that after the event, she helped deal with injured people and bodies, as she was a nursing student at the time. After she finished talking, she simply got up, and walked away. Definitely the most memorable thing about the trip. Wherever she is, I hope she's doing alright, and is living her best life. When I was stationed at Fort Hood, my unit sent me to work at the USO on post due I could take care of some major family issues without interference from the unit. Anyway, there was an older man that would come in on Wednesdays and help serve food to soldiers. I got to talking to him one day, and he told me his name was William Ganey, and he was the first chief enlisted advisor to the chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff, and the highest ranking enlisted man in the military. I didn't believe him at first, but I wasn't about to call him out. I googled his name when I got home and sure enough, he was who he said he was. I was just a sergeant at the time, and every time he came in I talked to him, and got advice, and I learned a lot from him. The most interesting thing was he treated all the soldiers that went to the USO with respect, never bragged about who was and never talked down to them. I had a guy sit at my desk one day asking for some paperwork or something. Without any prompting, he proceeds to launch into a story telling me about how no one here understands him, so he's leaving his wife and going to wherever to join a church with his friend because the church. Members are the only ones who truly get that the white people are the chosen people of the Lord. Apparently all the churches here are intentionally misleading people because they don't want the truth to get out or some other bullshit. He told me I was a true daughter of Abraham, and because of that, I would inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's the first time I've ever run into someone in real life who was actually going to join a group that was widely acknowledged as a cult, so it really stands out to me.